Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, happy Tuesday, October 17th, 2023. Um, just, just had to jump on a live, guys, and talk to you about a uh, tweet that I saw from Peter Schiff uh, a couple hours ago. Really caught my attention, really stopped me in my tracks. Just, you know, how many different ways can you slice up this debt, you know, fiat money disaster that we have going on here in the United States? But what, what caught my attention about it got to the central issue again of, of scale and 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 how we we just can't know how badly we're screwing with things uh, from a scale perspective uh, when we get into the size of the of the debt and the and the deficits and so forth that we're running and so basically the the tweet that he sent I'm, I'm mostly paraphrasing I might get some of it right. Uh, you know, word for word, but basically Schiff was saying that the yield on the five-year treasury had hit like 4.87% today, or something like that, 478 or 487, something like that. And he said the last time that it was higher, I don't want to, I, I want to say he said higher, not equal. The last time it was higher than that was 2000. Yeah. 2000 and that the debt in 2000 was 5.6 trillion dollars so we were at 5.6 trillion in the year 2000 that was the Bush Gore election year and the yield was higher than 4.87 but now we've reached those yield amounts once again, 23 years later, and the debt is six times as big. So that's what I'm talking about, the scale effect, right? So, so we've, got, we've got an unconscionable amount of debt that is now, that is now subjected to rates that are similar to what they were when the debt was was a sixth of this size. And I, I mean, it just, you know, I, I just was like, this is this is unbelievable. I mean, this is just absolutely unbelievable. Um, so, I, I mean, who knows? Like, who, you know, who knows what this leads to? Who knows what what this all means in the end? Like, we're, like we've never seen scale like this before. Okay, I've never seen scale like this before. And the United States is not headed in the right direction from a spending perspective, right? I mean, we've got, you know, we got two fronts of wars now that, that we are contributing to, right? That, that we have to, you know, help fund, right? I mean, that's, that's the way it's been painted, uh, that, that this is just an inevitability uh, that we're going to be, you know, dealing with both of these fronts simultaneously for the foreseeable future. So, so no, you know, there's there's no hint of any policy change on that, right? And 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 that's coming at the exact same time. It's coming at the exact same time that we're already stretched way too thin, minus any wars. Get you know, just forget about the wars for a second. With the, with the interest rate where it is and the interest on the national debt exceeding the defense budget and the fact that Medicare, Social Security are about 10 or less years away from insolvency. I mean, we've already got massive, massive financial issues. And then you throw in a two-front war scenario, okay? So I, I got I to gotta say, guys, I read many, many years ago um, a book called Blowback. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys have heard of that book or if you read it or what your thoughts were on it. It's been a long time since I read it, so I'm not going to get anything exactly correct about it. But if there's one thing that stands out about it that I'll never forget. Uh, it, was the, it was the one thing that, that, that was unshakably taken from the book. Uh, when I read it, I think in like the late 2000s, call it like 07, 08 time frame. 
And that was that there was a section in the book, you know, blowback is written by a former CIA officer. And he was talking about how getting involved in different, um, you know, different conflicts around the world and stuff had consequences. And it would often blow back on the United States in unforeseen or unintended ways. And one of the things he was addressing in the book, of course, was 9-11 and our response to it and everything. And, and one, of those, one of the parts of that section addressed, I believe it was Zarqawi, but, but I could be wrong about that. It was, the, it was the number two guy. It was the guy that everybody said was Osama bin Laden's number, Zawahiri. Yeah, I think it was, I think it was Zawahiri. It was the number two guy uh, beneath bin Laden. And he was quoted as saying one of these like videos that, the, that Al-Qaeda made or whatever, that the whole point of 9-11 was to draw the U.S. into a prolonged and protracted and, and um, financially destructive conflict that, that, they, that they were certain and more than comfortable with the fact that they would never defeat the United States on a military battlefield. They, their, their aims had nothing to do with anything military. They just wanted to goad the United States into a fight that would bleed us dry financially. And so essentially what Zawahiri, if it was Zawahiri, was saying was, we're really attacking the United States financially. We're attacking its financial base or foundation and trying to upset or disrupt that. And, and the military stuff is just a means to an end. And so that, that really rang pretty, pretty loudly in my head. I mean, I, I, I mean, up till then, I, I was just starting my sort of awakening to these financial fiscal issues the United States had. I really hadn't paid any attention to that prior to like the 06 timeframe. Uh, it, was, it was definitely the year 2006 that I really became aware of, of a lot of these topics and subjects that you guys hear me talk about on, on these platforms and stuff. Um, so I, I was only about a year or two into that. And I read that book and I read that section and I was like, wow, that, that kind of blew me away. So anyway, guys, that's what I think about now. Uh, when I think about, you know, the, the, the you know, the never ending conflicts and the, and the, and the two front wars, all this stuff that we're tangled up in on top of the structural systemic problems that we have financially. The fact that we have $194 trillion in unfunded liabilities that don't even show up yet on our balance sheet. Things like that. You know what I mean? You know, they, 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 you pile these, these, uh, these wartime situations on top of and stuff like that. So uh, an absolute mess, absolute mess. And, and so Schiff's tweet triggered me on that. Um, I think I tweeted it back out from my personal account, not from Wealth For Real, but uh, you guys can just look up Schiff and you'll see it there. So anyway, hope everybody's having a great Tuesday. Uh, I'll be back with you guys again this week. Um, thanks for checking in on on the live, on the Facebook page, on the YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, would love for you to go over to the YouTube channel at Wealth For Real and smash the subscribe button. Uh, but anyway, um, hope you guys have a great Tuesday night and uh, we'll be back with you guys again soon. All right, have a great day.